Hey, this is Zach over at MV Woodworks. Uh, today I just wanted to do a kind of a little uh, update, a Q&A kind of thing. I've been getting a lot of email questions and actually just uh, questions in the comments of the videos, which I really appreciate and it, it's it's fun being able to help out and uh, I definitely always answer things and give give answers when I know them and if I don't know the answer, I'll, I'll try and find out uh, an actual real answer. So um, one of the biggest questions I've been getting lately is, uh, it's coming from people that, you know, they want to get into casting as well as stabilizing. And they say, well, you know, can I get by with just a vacuum setup? Um, I know I need to get that for stabilizing wood, uh, but I do want to cast. Can I use vacuum to cast with? And my initial response has always been no. Uh, but I kind of held back a little bit. And when I started to think about it, I thought, well, why not? <laughs> you know, like the answer was no, but I had no clue why not. So I decided to just call Alumalite directly and ask them, uh, you know, they have a kind of a tech department and uh, see if they would tell me, you know, wh why or why not? Why what, Can you use vacuum in casting resins? And uh, I spoke with Carol, who's a tech rep over at Alumalite, and she was extremely helpful, took all kinds of time with me and, and answered all the questions that I had. So. Um, if you have any questions about Alumalite, for sh you know specifically, um, they are great with their their service. So um, anyway, so I, I posed this question: the same same setup and everything. Um, people that want to do both things, can you get away with just using a vacuum chamber uh, to cast you know resins with? Is kind of how I I put it. But um, obviously, she knows Alumalite. Um, the answer was maybe, uh, but. You know, it should technically work, but th the problem is vacuum uh, works a lot slower than pressure. Um, so, Alumalite white and Alumalite clear, you know, things that set very quickly, vacuums out of the question because it just won't suck enough air out uh, before it sets up and hardens uh, to do any good. So, uh, but polyester resin epoxy, these things are slow setting, and even Alumalite has some slow setting uh, resins. Technically, uh, it may be possible to use vacuum, but I'm going to just, the caveat is it really, it's not the best way to do it. Now, if, if you are going to do stabilizing wood and you want to get into casting, you have got to get a vacuum chamber. I mean, that's, if you're going to stabilize wood, that's the way you do it. So you cannot use a pressure pot to stabilize wood the right way. So you're going to have to get this vacuum set up, and frankly, if you're going to run polyester resin or epoxy, give it a try. It's not going to hurt anything as far as I know. So you can try it, and if it doesn't work for you know whatever resin you're using, then go and drop the 100, 120 bucks on a pressure pot. Now, I'm going to say you should, if you're going to cast, I would get a pressure pot. That is the correct way to do it, and you're going to get better better results. You'll get the best results using pressure. Um, I also wanted to kind of explain what's going on because that was that was my question. I, you know, if, if you want to remove air from something, you put it in vacuum, in, in a vacuum chamber and suck the air out. That's how you get air bubbles out of stuff, you know, and that's like the common sense answer. Pressure almost doesn't make sense in, in, a, in a way because you're adding air, um, not necessarily to your resin, but you know, you're putting air in the tank instead of taking it out. So, I asked Carol what, what exactly is going on when you say, oh, I'm going to put it in the pressure pot and it's going to get rid of the air bubbles. What you're doing is you're compressing the air uh, so small that it's microscopic and it's effectively gone. Now, it's not removing it technically, but it, it's pretty much gone. You're, you're, you're removing it. So uh, pressure pots work, I think, instantaneously. You know, you put it up to 50 PSI and it's compressed the air down. So... That's why pressure works a lot better, especially for fast setting resins like Alumalite and uh, Alumalite White and Clear and, and anything else that's a fast setting resin. So I just wanted to kind of cover that, explain what was going on. Um, it was, you know, your questions helped me out because, you know, I've, when I got into this stuff, I just, people said, you got to get a pressure pot. I didn't really say why do I need a pressure pot I, besides the fact that it gets rid of air bubbles uh, with Alumalite. I didn't really think about what's, What's going on? Why do I need to do that? What is it physically doing to the resin? So um, it, it helps out. You know, you, you ask questions, and if I don't know them, I'm going to try and find out the answer, and it makes me think about what's going on. And frankly, uh, when you think about 
pressure is uh, compressing those air bubbles, um, I'm a lot more weary about um, pulling my re my castings out early. Um, I'm I've switched things a little bit, at least just mentally, where I'm going to give it a, a good amount of time to to cure, because if you release the pressure too early and the and the resin hasn't set up fully it's going to expand again. Those air bubbles are not necessarily leaving your casting. They're still in there. They're just tiny. If you release the pressure and they expand, then you're going to get air bubbles in your casting. So uh, it made me think, you know, and I'm probably going to get better results uh, because of these questions. And so I hope that video was helpful. I know that it actually helped me uh, understand what's really going on with the pressure pot. Um, I just never really thought about it, I guess. I, just, I got good results, but I think knowing how how it, it's operating, what it's how it's affecting the resin uh, is going to make me make sure that, uh, you know, I've given it the proper amount of time to cure uh, to get the best results. Now, that's generally accepted ways of doing it anyway, but I think it helps when you really understand why you shouldn't do that, you know, take it out and cut it up right away. Um, if you're going to get into it, you know, you may want to start with a vacuum pump. You have to use vacuum to stabilize wood doing that, you know, sucking the air out and, and putting resin in, what I kind of think the proper way of doing it is. You have to use vacuum, so uh, you can't really get around it. Now, you don't have to use a pressure pot with epoxy and polyester resin. If you don't mix furiously, you know, you're careful mixing, you're not going to put air or, or trap air in the resin in the first place and pour it you know, in the corner and let it push the air out. There, If there's no air to get rid of, then you don't need to remove it, you know. So uh, doing it carefully can can get you by. Now, if you're using Alumalite, I would, you got to use a pressure pot. You definitely have to use it for the clear. Um, Alumalite just recommends that. Technically, you can get away with it with the white, but that's only because it's a little thinner. But that stuff sets up so quick that I recommend pressure with Alumalite, period. So if you want to get a hold of me, if you have a question, uh, you know, definitely send it to me. You can either put it in the comments or you can uh, uh, email me at zach at nvwoodworks.com. Um, like I said, if, if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you or I'll try and find the answer uh, from someone that knows what they're really talking about. Um, I love the questions. They help me become better at this uh, and it and I like helping other people get started with this. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd rather <laughs> learn and know the answers anyway. So send questions. I love it. Uh, comments, definitely leave some comments on my videos. I love reading, you know, what, what your thoughts are on the video. If you have any feedback, that's great. So um, you can get a hold of me, like I said, uh, uh, through the comments. Email me, zach at nvwoodworks.com. And I'm also on Twitter and Facebook, so you can find me there. But I hope this was helpful, and uh, let me know what you think. You know, if you've uh, used vacuum for casting, leave a comment. Let me know um, how it works. So... Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.